try to put a background on her. Is that okay for you? Sure, whatever you want to do. The I pictures in the in the background I shouldn't be there. These pictures, you know, well, it's okay. inside the china closet. You don't need that much fuss. Like the background, but I um, don't know if I could do it's another background real quick. Your mother and the babies, the two two babies. Robert Rose granddaughter. Lay it down, that's all. Okay. Out of sight, you know, and you don't have more more stuff in the background. What else? Are you, you're in uh, Montgomery? That's yes. good. Is that good? How, how is it in Montgomery today? It's not interesting. How's it? She's uh, she's fussing about the background. Okay, well, you guys take the time. Is that okay for you, Romaine? Yeah. And can you hear her okay? I did when she spoke. Yeah. Okay. So, well, nice to meet you, Beth. Nice to meet you. And I could change all the names on all of that because this is my Zoom account, of course, but um, this is Romaine Davis, Romaine Catherine Johnson Davis. <laughs> yes, ma'am. All right. Nice to Hi there. I'll get off mm -hmm. and um, one of the things that I guess we need to do is kind of do a check in with you, Romay, about um, how you feel if you Let's get tired one. of sitting. They can see it. No, it's going to be on the video because they're recording this. Or oh, is it too heavy? No. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Well, turning it over to you, Beth, but I'll be right here on the side and I'll... Uh, okay. Yeah. All right. Yes. be available okay all right just to let you uh make sure we're all on the same page i'm gonna record this for um the women veterans historical project and okay. gonna let you we're gonna um transcribe yeah. it and we're mm -hmm. gonna let you see it before we do anything with it but it'll be part of a research project that uh people will be able to use all around the world so will she need to speak up she can't hear you, and I have the speak the volume up as high as I can. Okay. Also, uh, if I if I yell, does that help? Are we better? Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. And um, maybe slow. You have to the cadence slow. a little bit. <laughs> That's all. Okay. My all Yankee, right. my Yankee roots are showing. <laughs> okay. Today is February nineteenth, twenty twenty one. My name is Beth Ann Kelsch, and I'm doing a Zoom interview uh, for the Women Veterans Historical Project at UN University of North Carolina at Greensboro. And I'm speaking um, via Zoom to Montgomery, Alabama. Uh, Ms. Davis, can you state your name the way you would like it to read on your collection? I didn't get the message. Just say Romay Catherine. How do you want your name? Romay so. Catherine. I would have to say Johnson Davis. <laughs> okay, well, we will we will do it all. Thank you. Uh, can you please tell me when and where you were born? In King George County, Virginia. Okay. October 29, 1919. Okay. And can you tell me a little bit about your family, what your uh, parents did? They were fabulous people. Okay. <laughs> and I had five brothers. Okay. And now they sometimes wouldn't allow me to follow them, but I would take a chance and go. Were you the youngest? They... I'm in the middle. I'm the, the third child, and I was three younger. Okay. Uh, and what did your parents do? My what father was a rigger uh -huh. and in the Navy. He worked in the Naval Proving Ground where they tested the shields and armor plates for boats, for ships, I call them boats. And okay. uh, to stand whatever kind of gun that might be shot at it. Okay. Um, and uh, my, mother, she... my mother didn't do, she worked in, in, in um, houseware with other people. She was okay. like a baby, you know, cook or something. She didn't cook, but she was, uh, took care of the children and all that went with them. Okay, so what was it like growing up in uh, Virginia? What was it like growing up? 
I didn't get that, please. What was it like I'm growing up? Oh, it was fun. It was country. It was in the country, okay. Wild open spaces. Not the wide open spaces, but the wild open spaces. Wow. We had animals of every description, feathered and hair. We had dogs and cats and geese and pheasants and guineas. And oh, wow. Ducks, turkeys, uh, geese. And what else did we have that I played with all the time? I had a gander that would chase my brother, catch him in the seat of his pants and hold him and flap his wings at him, beat did him up. Did you enjoy watching that? I tasted geese. Tasted, he was my, then that brother was the, like the, the uh, last, the second to the baby brother. Okay. And, and so he was a little bit big, but he would go with the chickens and into the chicken area and the goose would catch him. My mother said, child, go get that child. And I'd have to chase the goose. Oh, wow. That's, it was again, uh, it was fun though. That's good. You're very brave. I'm kind of, I'm, I'm scared of geese. So, uh, so you was sort okay. of a farm. So you raised your own. It wasn't garden. a farm. It was just my daddy's farm. Okay. You know, it was small. Just, I guess about six acres or something like that. Okay. Um, where we did had you everything. Go to, okay. uh, how did you like school? Where did you go to school? I always enjoy school. Okay. At home and, and outside. Yes. Okay. I, I didn't like uh, mathematics when I was growing up. But I like mathematics. Okay, that's yeah. actually my question. So um, where, where did you, what were, where did you go to school? Where did you go to high school? And King George, and they okay. didn't have a high school for us. So my mother, when we got to be of age, we'd go back to New Jersey and live with grandma oh. and go to school. Where, where, I, in New, where in New Jersey? Was she from New Jersey? Camden, New Jersey. Camden. It was then Camden, New Jersey. I don't know, it's in Portsdown, I don't know. So you went to high school in Camden and- uh, I it? went I went in Camden High, up through Camden High, and then I went to New York and I went to school there. Oh, uh, where, what what school in New York and when? For high school or were we talking- uh, I started school? high school in, in Camden, New okay. Jersey. Yeah, then when I had to go, I went to New York for high school. It was Heron High. H A A R E N. Yeah, and and who did you stay with in there? I went. Where did I go from there? Who no, live? who did you stay? Who did you live oh, with? I, I lived with a, a distant cousin. She had two children, and I went with her. I lived the okay. whole time in, in New York there at that age with uh, them. She had a boy, Stanley, and the girl, Josephine. Okay. And what year did you graduate? What year? Yes, ma'am. I'd have to think about that. Years passed swiftly. I finished school in Washington, D.C. and at uh, uh, Dunbar High School. But my mother got sick and I went home to stay mm -hmm. six months. And that's where I ended up. Uh, went to Heron High in New York. That was fun because I was big enough then to go to the parties and wow. what And um, in Camden, I think I left Camden to go there. And then when I went home, I went back with the, uh, I can't think of the last name of them now. Josephine Thomas, their name was Thomas. And it was a mother and uh, the two children and me. And, uh, I didn't graduate graduate at Heron because when Mama was sick, I went home. Okay. And I took care of here for a, se a six months season, and then I went back to school for the last semester. I ended up in Washington D.C. By then, I was about uh, eighteen, I guess. Did, who did you I live with? Eight. Where did you live in Washington D.C.? Were you living? I don't remember which K Street, but I don't remember numbers. Okay, were you living I by yourself? Of, I had a lot of relatives in Washington that I could have stayed with, but I didn't don't remember who I was with, maybe by myself. Okay. Uh, so you graduated and then what happened? Did you know what Dunbar. you wanted to do? Yes, I graduated from Dunbar. Okay. 
And I think that must have been 38 or 39. Okay. So what did, you, what did you do after you graduated? I went back to the country. And then when I was about 19, I guess I went to Washington and had a job in the uh, printing press, uh, printing uh, office. What is it called? The Mint. Bureau of Engraving. Okay. And okay. I, I learned how to flip those big sheets for the dollars and put them on the machine. And the machine would go around and print. And you'd examine them to see if they were flaws or the ink didn't catch. And if it were, you would quickly tip it aside. It would be other inspections afterwards too, if you see fingerprints in the way or that kind of thing. Do you like but that job? You had to shine the plate because it was inked. Mm -hmm. You had to shine it. By the time it got to you and put the sheet of paper on it and print that $50 or $1,000, whatever they put on it, you know? They printed paper money. Right. I worked there, I guess, about a little over a year before the war. Okay. Uh, so the war started essentially for the United States in 1942. Yeah. Um, so you were, what, what did you do after the Bureau of Engraving? I don't remember what spot was in between there, but I went to the war in 42. I went home and I asked mom and pop if it was okay with them because my brother, my youngest brother had been in, uh, inducted. Okay. Was and all the boys had gone to service. I had one brother who had been in service. He went to the army rather than go to school. After he finished high school, he went to service. And each one was in a different branch of service. Oh. So all six of, six of us were in the military. I was the last one to go. They, my mother and father agreed, said, you're young enough, and if you want to go and travel, do so. Just take okay. care of yourself. So what date did you enter? Uh, you enlisted in the Army? I was in the uh, postal unit, 688 right. Battalion uh, postal unit. But I was, uh, when I went to basic training, I wanted to be a driver, you know, so wow. I, I had been assigned to the motor pool and I worked as a driver most of the time, carrying the officers, picking them up and taking them where they had to go. And this is at this is at Fort Des Moines you were doing that? Mm -hmm. Was this in Iowa at Fort Des Moines? Is that when you were doing the I went to Fort Fort Des Moines, but yes. it was uh, after I went to Breckenridge. So you do you did um, where did you do your basic? Basic training was in part of it was in, in Fort Des Moines, Iowa. Right. And the park was in Breckenridge, Kentucky. Okay, so you started that's with that. where I spent that's where I spent most of my time learning the routine of the military. In and Kentucky. Kentucky. Okay. Um, and do you know what you, what what your the date of uh, your enlistment was? What you say? The date that you enlisted, it was 1943 something. I don't know what date. I don't remember. I have a record of it, but I don't remember. Yeah. I was okay. in the military two two years and four months altogether, from okay, basic so, training to the end. So why did you choose the army of all the branches? I didn't. The military people chose it for me. I wanted the oh. Air Force. I asked if I could be in the Air Force. That's what I signed up for. You know. Right but they needed a postal unit, so they had to make it out of me and some of the others. Okay, so do you, what do you remember about your basic training? Any, uh, anything, <laughs> any memories stick Not out? things and some bad things. Okay, uh, any you'd thing. like to share? I was a happy person. Okay. Mostly outdoors. I, they were allowed me to have a dog and I had a cat too. I'm a pet person. And I, the pictures on the dresses, I want to show you. Okay. Uh, and the other, the girls, the other women learned to like the dog, dog and the cat. It was a little dog, and a young kitten, and they tolerated, you know, both of them. It's hard to believe that they were allowed in in the military, but I had them for, for over a year. 
Now, was this in was this in Fort Des Moines or was this in Kentucky? Kentucky. About? I didn't do anything but training in, in Fort Des Moines, get registered and travel back, you know, to Kentucky. Hmm, interesting. Okay. Yeah. Um, so what do you besides the, the dog and the cat, what else what what were the good or bad things? She said, What else do you remember about no, the time no, there besides leave, leave, the dog leave. and the cat? Don't bother. She said, what else do you remember about the time besides the dog and the cat, about your training? All the basic training, that's just routine. <laughs> that was routine. I drove the cars, all different ones, about four, four or five bus, not the bus, the truck, named Cassandra. I named it Cassandra. And I was in the motor pool, that was my station in basic training. Mm -hmm. When I went overseas, I had to work in the post office at some point. Right. Well, do we, for the, for that, um, so for the tri six triple eight, they gathered women uh, together. So did they assign you to six triple eight, or or how did that work? Because they didn't go over till nineteen forty five, I believe. I don't understand. Forty five. No, they they were there a little bit before that in forty four. They took the ship over there. Was yeah. that 44? Yeah. That was before the oh, went, right. Sorry, went, November, November 44. Right. I went from Kentucky to New York, upstate New York, to take the ship. And okay. the, ship, the ship was called uh, Ile de France. Formerly, it was a passenger ship converted to a troop ship. Was and that the first time you were on a, uh, on a ship? That was the first time since when in the military, yeah. Were, were uh, you, how did you feel? I mean, that, you know, you, you had to... You, intrigued and excited and glad and satisfied and everything. I wasn't scared. I expected to be frightened because I was a homebody. But you weren't. So how did you, how did they find you for the 6888? Did they come up to you? What she said. How did you get assigned? To the triple eight, did they come ask you or did no ask you what you want to do? You know, in the, the line of work that they had for you to do, and if you were the right build, if you fit that job, you know, I wanted to be mostly outside, you know, I didn't want to be an office person or training person, anything like that. I like to be by myself and I like to be outside, and uh, I so the motor pool and they gave it to me. And I had a very good lieutenant in the motor pool, very pretty woman. And she was nice to everybody. She was good. Lieutenant Jordan. Lieutenant, Lieutenant Jordan. So you said uh, Cassandra was the truck. Do you remember what model it was? The truck? No, I don't know the model of the truck, but it was one of the current ones of the season. And it was a two and a quarter. Okay. And I had a weapons carrier. That's the little little uh, open back vehicle. I had a okay. jeep, and I had a station, uh, not station wagon. I had a staff car. Staff car was when you take the office and the big shots. Right. Yeah. Do you have? And, uh, what did you like to drive the most? What 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 vehicle was your favorite? To drive. I liked the truck because it was fun to be in it in a way from the, everybody. And I drove the staff car most of the time, the Jeep sometimes. I had a chance to drive an ambulance without the customer in it. And uh, when we were going on different jobs of learning and uh, some of the women went and they called me Johnny when I was in the service. And they, Johnny, you be careful. I said, I'm always careful, always careful. And I am. And the harm that's done somebody else is doing it. I'm not going to hurt anybody or do anything bad to anybody. And I used to drive, yes, I used to drive most of the time. I didn't work in the post office very often. Sometimes I would start the day in the post office and then they would call for driver. And I would be the one that you turn to Jordan and say, Johnny, you want to go? I wanted to go. And this was in Kentucky, right? Are we in, are we in uh, England now? Mm -hmm. 
Were you doing the driving in Kentucky, uh, what you're talking about now, or are we in- Yeah, that's where I lived. That's where I lived. Okay. I went for training in Des Moines and I lived in Kentucky. Okay. They sent us to, uh, uh, to Georgia toward the end when we were really preparing to go overseas, we went to Arkansas. Okay, through your overseas study, training. You know, Did all you, of us uh, trying to go overseas, we had to go to Arkansas to be, I guess, brainwashed. I guess, I don't know what it's called. <laughs> but we learned different things, how to behave and how to, how to act as when you call and had duties, you know, uh -huh. and how not to play too much and that kind of thing. Be serious about what you do. Was Charity Adams there doing the training yeah, with she you? Was, she was the boss, the boss of the whole the unit. Right, so she was there at Fort Oglethorpe with you? I don't remember whether she went there or not. She probably was there because she was the captain of the whole unit. Right. And we had another officer when we were in Kentucky. What's her name? Uh, short, stout, light complected lady. I don't know. Lieutenant, uh, I forgot her name. All of the officers, I don't remember a single name. <laughs> I didn't have any dealings with her most of the time. Unless I was trouble or something. You know, it. trouble sometimes. So, so back to we're go back to Kentucky for a little bit. Um, how did the officers that you were driving around in the staff car? How did they treat you? Beautiful. Once I had an accident, and I was driving the Provost Marshal, and I'll always remember that because I was scared. Uh, the soldier came through. We had gates, you know, came right. through the opening, speeding. And the provost marshal was like the policeman, you know? And he was riding in the back of my car and I was riding sensibly so that he wouldn't have to charge me or possess me or anything. And he hit my car broadside by the driver's door, bumped my face against the window. When you found that nobody was seriously hurt or caught or dead or anything like that, we went on after riding up the accident. And I guess the soldier got in trouble, at least getting told about his driving, you know, but I'm so glad it wasn't me. I didn't get a pink slip because I hit, somebody hit my car. Now, were these both white officers? Beg your pardon? Were these, uh, it's a segregated army. So were these white officers you're driving around? Mostly, 99% of the time. Okay. So they all treated me well. Okay. I had no problem with any of them. Did you have a favorite officer? I had people who would talk, you know, when they would ride with me, but I didn't have a favorite officer. No. And were your bar your did you live in the barracks in uh, Kentucky? Yeah, I had in an or open it, barrack, you know, with the rest of the women. No, was it segregated or integrated? No, seg everything was segregated. The whole okay. unit, the whole unit was a black unit all women from different parts of the country. Big yeah. ones, and tall ones and little ones. Not Mamie Lewis was a little short four foot person. Word me to death. So besides drivers and postal, what else did the other black women do in Kentucky? That's all, that was our job. We were a postal unit. We okay. marched, we did performances. We sang in the choir, different ones of us at the church chapel, whatever you call it. Uh -huh. And uh, some of us studied and some of us went to the bar, I guess, wherever. And how did you, what did you do for your, for, did you ever go off, off, the, um, off the camp or off the base for your free time or did you stay on base? In Kentucky, I didn't. Other places I did. Yeah, I would go sightseeing, but I stayed pretty close at at Kentucky. Okay. I had any need to go, but when I went to uh, uh, Georgia, we were getting more closer to going overseas without knowing that we were going overseas. I didn't know we were an overseas unit. Oh, you didn't know? I didn't know until later. I wasn't interested. I was just going, you know? So and how did you get from, I mean, they must have signed you up. I mean, did they start in Kentucky? Was that called the 6 
or did they i my i, I thought they formed that later i just try to figure i don't understand how you got from kentucky into the six triple eight that's where i'm i'm a little confused we went to to georgia for i guess advanced training right but they they had to did they just one day say hey we're transferring you or how did that work you do sit down in, in an auditorium and people explain things to you okay and they tell you what's going to happen when they told us we were going overseas everybody was excited they didn't tell you every day but they would call a meeting and say this is going to happen the first sergeants and those people knew in advance that we were going i didn't even know we were an overseas plan until it was time to go almost and i think most of the other women who were in offices were not interested you know they did their jobs and worked as a military person but we right. knew that we were being prepared already for the training and they see who had the stamina to take it and who had the behavior to take it and i guess they perused everything about you you know how many women did they not take I mean, was there, was most I women? Think, or? I think everybody in the unit went. Everyone in the unit. Okay. The little ones and the big ones too. Okay. We had now, different sized people in, in the unit. Now this, this was a very historic unit. I mean, they had to fight, um, you know, they had, no, they had to fight to get the rights for uh, black women to serve yeah. overseas. Did they, I, I would imagine it. they impressed that on you Did, in the training. Did they mention how important and historic this was? Look how late they are graduating. I mean, talking to us even, you know, they didn't do that for the black women when they first came home. They didn't have any excitement. Right. Everybody went in their own direction, you know? Right. But we, we were a very united group. Some of us would misbehave and some of them were temperamental. I guess I was one of the temperamental ones. I didn't like foolishness about from people. You know, I grew, what, I grew what did up, you mean by that? What do you mean by I, temper? temper uh, what, what about foolishness did you not like? I, I didn't drink sodas and beer and other things. And I, they didn't make me do it. You know, I didn't like it. I drank my coffee or my tea. Mm -hmm. I was like an old fashioned person already when I was just a teenager. <laughs> Got it. Okay. I, I grew up with five boys and I didn't understand girls so much. Okay. To, be put, to, put, to be put in a group of 500 women, I don't know how many of us were in the group, probably 300. And, and I didn't understand female behavior, okay. temper, temperaments, and, and what have I was a group of boys. I did kind of outdoor stuff. Right. Did you make any friends or were you kind of alone? I made a lot of friends, a great many friends. Okay. A whole gang of us. Yeah. I've lost contact with most of them. Okay. There were some that was exceedingly close, like a sister or brother. Okay. Uh, so how long, how long, do you remember how long the training in Georgia was before? I just looked it up and the boat uh, it was Ile very, de France went over in February, 1945. We went there for a very short period to Georgia in a very short period. We knew then that we were going overseas, preparing to go overseas. Okay. And I guess we were being tested as well, if we could stand the thought of going overseas even, but most of us were excited about it. And if, what if you hated? What if I was there and I said I hate it? I hate everything about this. Would I still have to go, or would they dismiss me? Well, a lot of people who were homebodies they didn't want to go. But I don't know who who stayed behind. I have no idea. I wasn't interested. So you had a choice of whether you're going to go. You I had a choice. I, did I have a choice? Yes. Yes, I knew I wanted to go. That's why I left home. Okay. But I asked so, them. Uh, if they'd be okay, and they said they would be okay until I come back. They thought I would come back. Okay. So you took a train from Georgia, I guess, up to New York City. I don't remember when we traveled by troop, uh, troop uh, convoy or if we went in separate groups. I don't remember that. Transfer. Okay. Uh, was, was the... Uh, how long was the ship ride overseas? How long did it take? 
it was in February and it was cold and it was windy and it was weather and the waves were mountainous high, exciting, beautiful. It was a splendid trip as far as I was concerned. A couple of times we were afraid because we reported that we were torpedoed. Right. And their ship did some things on the ocean, you know? It didn't go where it was going, it went other places. So and that was exciting. That was exciting and it's it, scary to most people, but I didn't get scared. I didn't get sick. Wow. And I, I used to get car sick when I ride from home to New Jersey. I would be huh. on the side of the road a few times before I got to Jersey. And they said, gonna leave your home next time? I said, don't do that. <laughs> Cause you know, I couldn't help it. I get car sick. I know right. what that's like, but right. I, I did not get ship sick. I was a good soldier. That's good. I helped a lot of people who were frightened, a lot of girls screaming and going on like females do. And I brought food to them from the canteen and I was able to walk. Just, I was advised to be careful because it was slippery and that kind of thing. When the waves come up, the boat would get kind of wet. And uh, <laughs> it was interesting, interesting. That was a beautiful time of my life. Okay. Well, it was rough, but I enjoyed it, and I'll never forget. <laughs> okay, so uh, before we before we're, we go over to England, is there anything else you wanted to you remember about Kentucky or Iowa or Georgia and experiences that you would want you know happy, sad, hard? No, we weren't in in the public when we were in service. Those who wanted to be in public could go out and have friends and go to bars and tea rooms, wherever they wanted to go. But we were there as a group and I stayed right. close to the group. And what intrigued me and everlasting was the ship ride. Okay. That was horrendous. The ship, would, when the torpedo came underneath of us, they say two times, because we, we tripped over the, the ship like it was gonna turn over. Oh, wow. Lean on the side and go, go, continue going forward and leaning on the side at the same time. Wow. And you can look at the waves in the distance and the little ship ahead of us would be way up in the sky. The oh, wave, wow. The wave was so tremendous, you know, it's hard to believe. But that was, I think, the most exciting point of my whole journey is to see the ocean and be there in person to see the ocean change its attitude, you know? And you weren't scared, you were excited. I, no, wasn't, I wasn't scared, I was the excited one. Because of the way nature handles things. Uh -huh. you know? I hadn't seen a spout of water that tall in my life. No, it's a, wow. And, and my ship would be down in the bottom, in the bottom of the wave, or the crest of it, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and and the ship ahead of us would be way up top like a little chip. Uh -huh. And that wave would be, I wouldn't believe if anybody told me that a wave could be that big, that deep. Wow. No, I wouldn't believe it. I didn't have a camera to make any reports of anything, but I wished I had. Right. And I wish that somebody had printed some of those pictures so that the public could see them. Right. Who else, was, who else was on the ship besides the six triple eights? Nobody but the WAC. Just the WAC, okay. Yeah. And okay. the men who work, the people who work guiding the ship and teaching us as we went along that you're not to be moving about at certain times because they were conducting. They knew what was going on. We didn't know what was going on. When we knew we were, the, the torpedoes were coming at us, they had already started at us and the ship would jerk to the side uh -huh. or lean to the side. And then we'd hold on to whatever was available. And at night one time, people still fell out of the beds out of those bunks. Some of them were three, three stories high. And a lot of the girls were frightened. But I, for some reason, did not get scared. And you, did, you didn't fall out of your bunk? No, wow. I, didn't choose, I didn't choose a high bunk anyway. Well, I was smart. One of the bottom ones. Yeah. 
Okay, so it, it took 11 days for uh, the Ile de France to get over and it landed or it, uh, to Glasgow uh, on, yes, on uh, February, where is it? Da, da, da. February, let's see, I've lost it. Um, February 14th, so Valentine's Day, 1945, mm -hmm. uh, you docked at Glasgow. Now, according to this article, there was a German V-1 rocket that exploded near the dock. Do you remember that? No, I remember the dock a little bit when we let, you know, marched off the ship. Okay. But I don't remember what happened, how, who greeted us. And I always thought that we were in Rouen, France when we landed. They say Glasgow. I heard that not too long ago for the first time because I could bet my last dollar that we were in Rouen. Right. Well, that's. But we, we weren't there. We were in Glasgow, as you say. And I don't remember a thing about Glasgow. Okay. What I, I thought I saw was the, the city of Rouen. Okay. Uh, so you took a train to Birmingham uh, to. Uh, and then there was a military parade. Do you remember that? They had, that you were in a parade after a few days? Guess, no, I guess it was military, but I don't remember. Okay. Do you remember me? I don't remember the... how we got from the ship to where we, to the barracks we were going to stay in. And I don't remember that we did not stay in Rouen. Okay. Well, we're, we're, yeah, you went, to, you went to Birmingham first, according to this article. And then, that article, uh, I think, made a mistake. Okay. It's... <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll to, it's the it's the from the army, so I'll, yeah, I know. Okay, no, no I'm not. I'm, I'm just tell. I'm just reading what I have here. So, and you can tell me, uh, you know what? If we were glad. Or yeah, most everybody was glad to get off the ship. Yes, you know? they were anxious remember, to get going. Do you remember the first British people you met and what that was like? <laughs> do I remember the first? British. British people, English people. No, I was too busy looking at what I saw on a scene going on, you know? Right. I don't remember the first people we met. I would imagine I it would have been very we were too. I know we were lectured. We always had a lecture. We didn't anything like get off the ship or getting on the ship or that. But I don't remember the people. I don't remember the scenes. OK, well, do you remember what the lecture was about? Huh? Do you remember what they lectured you about? Being safe, one thing. Being cautious. They always did that. Don't do anything that you haven't been told to do or guided to do. You know? Did it? Did Just all the women? Just be safe. Did everyone obey that, or did some women not obey? Yeah, of course they don't obey. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Free, free, you can act the way you always act. You know, you take precaution mm -hmm. and you try to be mindful. But uh, at that time of life, you're just curious, right. I think, more than anything else. And do you, you remember, it's do you remember strange, the, I'm sorry, go ahead. I said, it's a strange situation to be home in your own country, knowing everything, and then being somewhere in a foreign country. Not knowing anything. Everybody, you're like a baby, you know, you have to be led, you have to be told, you have to be guided. Sometimes you don't believe it, but it's there. You know? Do you remember the parade you were in when you got there? No, but I was so curious looking at scenes on the roads as we okay. drove by. Okay. And it, they would tell us about the, the boxes where the bodies were stacked. Oh. All kinds of things, and my ears and eyes both were glued to what's coming next. Okay. Do you remember uh, your first days on the job when you went to the warehouses and saw all the stacks and stacks of letters? Do, what was yeah. your, can you tell me a little bit about that? Don't remember anything. Okay. Uh, well, what do, you, what do you remember about your work over there? My work was working in the post office with a bunch oh, of crazy I... women. Okay. And uh, yeah, they, they, because <laughs> they didn't know how to behave. They knew how to behave, but they wouldn't behave because they were alive. You know, they, they acted. What did they do? They, they would tease, and I didn't like to be teased. 
Oh, they're T0. That kind of thing. Okay. I was serious about what I was doing, very serious. Okay. And uh, I was annoyed sometimes when they want to play, you know, teasing you and, and uh, what you're going to do when, you know, I mind my own business most of the time. Okay. Uh, I was friendly enough. Okay. I, I wasn't buddy to anybody until after we got to work. Then I had about six or eight buddies, close ones. We traveled together, go to church together, that kind of thing. Help one another in whatever we had a disturbance. And uh, what kind of disturbance? Huh? What kind of disturbances? Arguments. You did this oh. and I didn't do it, or somebody else did something else and they didn't do it, you know? I was never a religious person. And I got in trouble with him because I fought back, you know? They liked to tease me because I wasn't the same kind of person that they were. Okay. And uh, I don't know if you know what I mean when I say that. It's just, I mind my own business. I was a person kind of aside. I wasn't uh, uh, too familiar. Okay. Uh, I had my own things and I had sufficient things and I stayed there. I had to borrow anything from anybody. And they always wanted to borrow a nickel or dime or quarter from me and wear me to death about it. You know, because they needed a drink and I didn't need a drink. I don't drink sodas. I didn't do things like that. I didn't even smoke at that time. Okay. And uh, I smoked, started to smoke when I had to do a lot of driving. And I gave, that, 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 I gave that up. Uh, I think in 59 or 16, I don't know what it was, but I gave it up when I was still just medium age because I found it wasn't good. Mm -hmm. And uh, they didn't want to go out, I didn't want to go out. You know, I had the dog and the cat and that's what I've had all my life. So I couldn't change my life to satisfy somebody else's Got it. And the happiness. And sometimes I get in trouble because I said I was selfish and I was this and I was that, and it's not true. And I had a PFC given to me for the work that I did, the promotion sort of. Mm -hmm. And uh, a couple of girls who would do mean things to me, hide things, wouldn't tell me where they were because I was temperamental, I guess, and aside from them. And of course I couldn't stop talking when the officer requested it, she kept telling me to shut up, but I couldn't stop talking. So she said, you're gonna lose your rank. I didn't consider the rank, you know? So if I lost it, and I did lose it, never got it back, because I wasn't working for it. I didn't have sense enough to think about trying to become a sergeant. You couldn't be a sergeant in the, you know? Only the favorites become special people. And, uh, my attitude wasn't a joining person. I wasn't in a crowd. And particularly about the, the quarters and nickels borrowed, worry you to death. Johnny, give me a quarter. Johnny, got a nickel? Johnny, help me. You help enough and then you stop. See, I like to read. I used to read a lot. I would draw, I would uh, read. I took my crochet with me, like an old lady. And I have pictures of that. And I had the dog and the cat and I played around around the yard with the cat and the dog. And that these so other women from other places in America didn't think that was fun. But it was comforting to me because that's what I grew up with. And if I could have it, it was mine. You see? And that's why I say I was different because I didn't come from the city. I came from the country and I enjoyed my life as a country person. I wasn't a nightclub person. I grew up with fellows. I could talk to them. They would understand. They like to act like they're human, not so indifferent sometimes. And uh, I liked singing in the church. Those are the kind of things that kept me, I would say in line, you know, made me happy. So I didn't follow the crowd. I don't do it today. Uh, 
And I think that's from the early training, being with five boys and me. So I don't mind it if somebody criticized me for that. I was always a good person doing the right things, helping anybody that I could help until they run it in the ground. And then I would become annoyed. And so it went. I could work as hard and as long as anybody else. And I did my job thoroughly. I can't find too much fault with the attitude and the work that I did, that I had. And I enjoyed every moment of it, except when I was fussing at somebody. <laughs> so what, what was the work like? What do you remember about the work? I would get away from the camp. I take the office and go where they want to go. Okay, so you mostly you mostly did the driving, not the sort. Yeah, of not the post office. Okay, so you did you drive off base too? Did you drive yeah. around Birmingham? Yeah, cities and up the mountains and around there, wherever they had to go, I would take them. Wow, wow, and, that must have been very. I did that. I did that when I was in the camps here, and I did that when I was overseas. And my lieutenant would give me the jobs in preference to some of the others. There were other good drivers. And it, it drove as, almost as much as I did, but I think I drove more than anybody in the, that particular outfit. Do you remember the name of your lieutenant? Name of what? Your lieutenant? Uh, lieutenant, uh, I had two. Lieutenant Jordan was one of my favorite. Lieutenant Powell. And she's one of them. It wasn't her who took the, the license, the, the PFC. The captain took the PFC. She overruled the rest of them in the, in the argument and said, I'm going to take your, your, your rank. So I said, you have to do it. You have to do it. Because Did I you ever get it back? I, I, I couldn't. No, I, need, I didn't try to get it back. Okay. She wasn't going to give it back. Maybe if I stayed longer, I would have gotten it back. OK. Um, so, what were you driving? Were you driving the same kind of vehicles or different? What, what kind of vehicles were you driving? I used to drive the staff car more than the other cars. I would use the weapons carrier and have to haul something. If you had to carry the troops, I would drive the truck. Okay. And, and, the staff and car, I had a staff car that would take uh, more people than a regular car. And they cut the staff car in half and elongated. it. And I had the regular staff car, like a regular car, six passenger car, five passenger car. And who were you driving around? Was it other six triple eights or were there other soldiers? No, no, the officers from different offices in the city. Okay. I was driving the Provo Marshal a lot, or driving captains, and I didn't know who they were or anything. I just pick them up and take them where they want to go. How did you how did you learn how to get around Birmingham? Birmingham, I don't remember, but I drove a lot when I was in France. Okay, well we'll get we'll yeah, get to France. And I, I I I knew I was acquainted with some people in, in uh, France and they taught me an awful lot about the city and about themselves and their way of life and everything else. And they had a little boy who used to teach me how to draw. Okay. When I, I would go to lunch, dinner with them whenever they asked. And I did things like that. I learned to drape fabric on a dummy while I was there. I learned about design while I was there. And uh, when I came back, that was my life's work. Okay. So these were French civilians that French. taught you this? French people, yeah. Okay. So you like the, uh, so you're down to Rouen. Um, Let's see, you were down to uh, June 1945. So do you remember, it was right after the Germany surrendered. Do you remember uh, Germany, the VE day? Do you remember in May 1945? Yeah. yeah. And wh what did you all do? Did you celebrate? We celebrate, that's all. We're glad, okay. we're glad, and we're, glad. we're sorry that the, the good part had ended. It was time for us to go home. Well, you still, there was still a, you know, you had, Japan hadn't surrendered yet. So, uh, so you landed in La Havre, uh, when you, from Birmingham, you, let's see, 
We went to Lahav. Do you remember landing there? Because it was it was a it was a oh, lot of ruins. I always think it was Lahav. Right. Yes, uh, do you remember what it was? Do you remember what it looked like? Because according to this article, it was in the Nazis had destroyed it. No, it was bombed. It had. Okay. It, didn't, it didn't appear to me it being bombed. It was solid enough for us to land wherever okay. we landed, you know. And we did see uh, places along the roads as we travel. They would point out uh, boxes that people had bodies had been stacked in, things like that. When they had to clean up after the war, after you know gangs would shoot. Civilians, or are we talking soldiers? Dead soldiers. Okay, so it was the French people. We didn't uh, see the bodies. We, they told right. us where they cased them when they were on the land. And these were French uh, civilians shooting Germans after the war. Who were the who were the who were the dead uh, people? Were they anybody that they found that was German? Anybody else? But uh, they were said this this box like this the way it was built. Is where oh. they had to leave the dead bodies until they could move the dead bodies. Interesting. And there were several of them as you passed by on the highway or okay. on the trip. So when you were in Rouen, how did you how did you meet the civilians? I'm assuming you were in barracks again. Or you were a co-worker, right? You worked alongside them. Beside, yeah. Did you work? alongside any German POWs? They didn't work. Those people didn't work at all with us. They would just greet us. They wouldn't even interfere with our work. Okay. Well, we'll we, didn't, we didn't work with the soldiers anyway. Okay. We just delivered the mail, stacked the mail for them, and it gets shipped off to that unit. Okay. I don't remember them working with us as a body of people. Okay. So you you mostly drove. How did you learn to get? Or how did you learn to navigate Rouen? I don't really know how I did that. I thought maybe I had been there before. Okay. Because I knew France a little bit. I don't know if wow. people studied it or I met families. Mm -hmm. I was as close to some families as I was to my own. In in New York or where? In Virginia? Yeah, they, they, took, they, they liked me too. How'd you okay. meet them? Did they invite you to their houses? Yes, to their house. Okay. And I used to play with the little boy in one family, and that family took got me into designing clothes. I went to some place where they would be draping fabric on a dummy. Okay. Make a shirt or a dress or a jacket or whatever. And I fell in love with it. Okay. And I learned how to do it. And when I came home, that's the field of work that I joined. Okay. And so I worked before, for 30 before, years. before we go back to the States, um, so do you remember any um, any of the marches that you did, the, the parades? No, I didn't remember them. I'm sure we did some. Okay. And so you were, you were, uh, you know, the, for a lot of uh, people in England and France, you were the first African American uh, that they've seen. And you heard some stories about, you know, the first interactions being rather awkward. Do you remember that, or did you feel I would? No, I, I, another I, I, it never part, awkward to me. No. Uh -uh. And it was also. Since there wasn't segregation, it was also, you know, kind of but a the nice... people there weren't segregated. Right. So I'm saying that was a good thing. So did you want to did you want to stay in France or did you were you eager to go home? I liked France better than I did England by a long shot. I nearly froze to death in England. I caught it. I caught the bronchitis. Oh my. It was so wet, it's so cold. I didn't enjoy England. I enjoyed talking to some of the people, but I saw more French people. And I enjoyed France. I've been back to France. 
There you have. I actually got to look up where I don't remember where Rouen is. That's where Joan of Arc was. It didn't was. look the same, though. It didn't look the same places I'd been. I've been to all the museums and places in the churches. Uh -huh. But when I went back, uh, I saw a lot of garbage. Remind me of the United States. Oh, that's not good. No, it's not good. I was surprised at the, the ramshackle or the, the places that I traveled through when I went back to France. I was on my way somewhere else when I went through France. And uh -huh. I, I was surprised that I had seen anything that was dilapidated. But I did, a lot of stuff. And I don't so know why they, I went that way. Did they teach you to drink wine? They, I didn't go as a unit. I went I said, did, you, did the French uh, people that you socialized with, did they teach you to enjoy wine or you still were a teacher? Yes, or? yes. And today, <laughs> today that's my drink. <laughs> okay. <laughs> my husband and I used to have wine for lunch or for, for dinner. Yeah. Uh, that's we, very, very that's French of you. Developed. Yeah. So you were there <clears throat> for a few months. You got to spend summer in France. That's not too too shabby. Um, and then you went to Paris in October. Do you remember that? Yes. And what was your was that? Uh, so that was the first time you saw Paris. What was that? Must have been very, very exciting. Do you, well, what do you remember about it, that? Yeah. What do you remember about hmm? Paris? What do you remember about Paris? The fact that the people were good. The people who worked with me, they wanted to teach me their, some of their activities. When I talk, they told me about design and I was interested in design. Okay. And I saw the draping. I had never seen draping in any of our schools. Right. How to make a pattern on a figure. Got it, okay. And, and, and when I came home, I had to find it. And I worked at it and I went to school and I learned and I designed clothes for children for 30 years straight. Oh, wow. So you- When you I came to Alabama, I left my job and got on the train and came on here. Okay. Do you remember where you stayed? As, according to this article again, this is what I'm basing this on, that um, uh, in Paris, there was maid service and chef made meals and you lived in a hotel. So that sounded, uh, do you remember that at all? Mm -mm. Okay. So uh, in early, maybe 1946, or do you remember when you went back to the States and did you want to stay by any chance? Yes, I could have stayed longer. Okay. In France. Yeah. But you didn't. You, but, the people uh, were different in France than in England. Okay. Do you want to talk about it? They were like the weather. The weather is different and people are different. Okay. Well, I enjoyed my friends. I enjoyed it. I wouldn't mind going back again. Okay. But I hope it isn't run down. I hope I don't find any place run down. I saw the most beautiful churches, museums, chock full of interesting things. Yeah. Did you go any sightseeing when you're in Paris? Did you see yeah. the Louvre? Every chance I got. Oh, wow. Okay. Now, did you do that alone or did you have a, a no, friend? No, go with some girl, two or three girls. Okay. I call them girls and women. Okay. They were uh, some people interested in the same things I was interested in. We stuck together more or less. Okay. We take and, walks. And you said the French people, the Parisians, they, they were happy they were to stare see at them. us. They would stare at us because we were new there. Some other people would stare at us, look at us. Right. But they hadn't seen that many black people at one time. Right. Okay. So uh, before we go back to the United States, which would have been January, depending on when when you were uh, uh, assigned to go home, that would have been January or February of 1946. What else, do you remember anything else you want to talk about I, from I, your time? No, I came home on the 24th. I landed here on the 24th. Uh, of December. February? December. Oh, December. Okay, you're on the earlier ones. Okay. And uh, Fort Dix, New Jersey? I think it was Fort Dix, yes. Yeah. 
So, and as you mentioned earlier, I don't remember Pokedex. I don't remember it at all. So, did you were that you mustered out of the whole army then, or did you go somewhere? Yeah, I, else? I enjoyed the army. I started to want to stay, but I I didn't because I wanted to be with my mother. Okay. I wanted to be home. So the, the duration. So. Mm -hmm. So you went from. I mean, that must have been quite a transition. You know, you were yeah. in right. France and England, and then now you're back. Did you have any? You know, you're back I in. I didn't really like you? England. I was at odds with England. I, I okay, didn't. So you, you never went back to England, I'm guessing. Did you just? Did you not like the people, or was it just the weather? I think it's the weather that it helped make me not interested. Got it. But the history was interesting and Churchill was interesting. I, I like to listen to his talks. Yeah. Uh, I bummed myself mostly, but in trying to learn about the people. Right. And to be, and we would go for short walks, but we wouldn't go far from the camp ever, ever you know? Right. And we would see things, but the weather was made me sick the whole time I was there. I had uh, uh, something I never had is uh, a croup. Right. Your throat's always clogged up. And they're always shivering, you know? <laughs> I can shiver when I think about it. Yeah, I, I can see why you wouldn't want to go back. Um... But the people weren't as friendly as the French people. Really? They didn't invite you to the house to have dinner in a minute, like we would here. Right. You know, and share the family. So you come back again. I almost lived with the family that I met. They would take, oh, wow. me, places, take me places. <laughs> well, that's nice. So you developed a tape. Did you learn to like cheese, smelly cheese also? Yes. Yeah. I didn't learn to like it. Oh, you didn't? I, I okay. learned to like the wine. You know? The wine, got it. No, French wine. This is not... So uh, before we, we get at, uh, to when you left the, the army, um, is there any, uh, any other stories, any other things, you know, that you want to talk about no, that you remember? Not really. I was glad to get home. Okay. You were tired of the army by then? Not really, but the, I knew it was in it, you know. Okay. I, yeah, I accepted it. I could go now, back again. Now, any family or so was your whole family and your civilian, your friends back in the States, were they supportive of you? Yes, they, and they were surprised at me wanting to go because I was a homebody, you know. I stayed home a lot and uh, I didn't want to leave my mother. So why did you, what was, why did you join then? I guess the excitement of going and the, the freedom of going and not having to pay for it or beg somebody for it. I thought it was an opportunity and I was a very healthy person and robot. And mama said, why not? If you want to go, now's your chance. Okay. And that's how she treated me, you know? My well, that must have been was, hard for her, you know, all of her children, she had, you know, all of her children joining the military. That yeah, my brother Gus, my second brother, my brother Tom was the first one. Uh huh. He, he was uh, in the USO business in Hawaii. Oh, okay. And my brother Gus had been in the anti-aircraft a few years before the war. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, he left and he went, instead of going on to college, he went to an aircraft somewhere down south and he he was the first one to go overseas okay and he had already been used to fighting you know with military things because he was on the fire truck he was a fireman okay and then uh my brother preston was next to me i was the next child and i didn't want to go at that time my brother preston was drafted for the navy that's why he uh -huh. chose to go. And he went to sea. Uh, I don't know if he went overseas very far. I don't think so. Then my brother uh, Preston 
was the next to go. I didn't go, so I was the next child. But Preston went into the Navy. Then my brother Purcell, who was a brilliant person, stuck up, you know, a very arrogant, arrogant person. Like he knew everything in the world mm -hmm. and he could do almost anything. He could play the piano, just listening to it. He could sing, he could dance, he could do anything. I've never seen one young human being who was gifted that much in every fashion. Okay. His name was Purcell. And then my youngest brother who lives in California today is Stansbury. He was drafted and then I wanted to go because he left me for mom and pop. Got it. He didn't go abroad. He was at sea, but he didn't go abroad. He was in the Navy, in the Marine Corps. He was a shock Marine. He, he was proud, beautiful in his uniform and all, you know. He did, are, are proud people. He's 90, 95 in December. Okay. So they all came back safely or were yeah, them? Everybody came home safely. Well, Mom that's... saw all of us again. Okay. Yeah. They were happy. Pop, Mom and Pop were happy. So and, I would have, well, how did you adjust from going from this big international life to back in the country? Did you have any I don't really know how I adjusted. Or, you know, I guess I just lived it. Mm -hmm. As the time went on, I became busy. And then when I went to school to learn how to design. Where did you go to school? Traphagen. Where did you go to school for that? Traphagen in New York. Oh, Traphagen. Okay. Sorry. It was a high All class, right. high class uh, design school. Wow. Okay. And by that time I could fit in. See, I wanted to be a doctor and I couldn't join when I was younger. And I didn't go off to anything separate. Okay. Only when I came back home and I knew about designing, I decided that I could design. And I went to school and learned. And, and there were several, you, you, there were several you, people who helped me. Okay. A, a Jewish man who had a Jodfer outfit as a business. And he taught me how to, to draft the pants. Then the pants had these side things on the legs of the, of the boots. Mm -hmm. And he showed me, talked to me about designing. What okay. you do. And I was intrigued by it. So, and he told me about the school, the Trapagan School, one of the finest. And so I called and finally got in. A couple of the teachers didn't want me in the class, but the, the boss of the class, boss of the school, Ms. Trapagan, accepted any of us who were qualified. And uh, I was able to go. I had a little trouble with Ms. Uh, what's her name? I forgot her name. But anyway, I overcame the, the, the dislike that she had for me. And I was a good pattern maker. That, I, was it a racial, racial yes, issue? Yes, yes. She's okay. kind of prejudiced, you know? Got it. And that used to irk me because I had never been prejudiced against at home in the country. And uh, I didn't like it out there in public, but I took it because I wanted to design. And it didn't take me long, about three years, I think the classes were, and I designed, learned to design anything. Did you, did you use your GI Bill education benefits to pay for yeah, that? Yeah, use that. Excellent, uh -huh. good. Yeah, that was a blessing. Yeah, GI Bill is a good thing. One good thing the, the government did. <laughs> now I can go to the uh, VA. Mm -hmm. I used to go in for my husband. He was kind of sickly after he came back. And uh, I used to go to the hospital with him sometimes. And he passed away in the hospital. So okay. I'm with him now, Your husband just has popped up in the story. Where, where, where did you meet him? Are we? Did you meet him in New York yeah. or after? We got married in... In the 50s, I don't remember. It's written in the Bible, but I don't remember. Okay, so you, you didn't know him when you were uh, in New York yet? Yeah. Okay. He so, and I lived in South America for almost two I'm years. Sorry. My husband, Jerry, and I. So you were in South America. Wow, okay. We haven't gotten to South America yet. We'll, we'll get there. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. When did you go to South America? Before Trap Hagen or after Trap Hagen? Before. That was with Charles, when, she, when I was married to Charles, you know? 
and he he was in service. He went back to service and left me again the second time. So from Fort Dix, when you got out of the military, mm -hmm. then you went to South America. Okay, that's when okay, I first, yeah, first got married. So you went back to the country and you met your husband, or did you already know him? I was married twice. Okay. I had a husband who was a neighbor when I was growing up, he was growing up. Right. He didn't live in the same village that I lived in in Virginia. But okay. Again, he was a very good person and a very nice looking person. And, uh, but he was different. Okay. He wanted the military and he was to fly a plane. He had his own plane. Okay. And, uh, I didn't want, I never rode in the plane. Really? Okay. No. I no. You sound like uh, an and he, and I, person. he was a businessman and he went to South America. That was the trip. Soon after I came home from the war, uh -huh. we, stayed, we stayed almost two years. And then he wanted to go back to war in an American war, you know. So, so wait, were you, did you marry him after you left the military or were you married before or during? After did you marry him? We after. were too young strong heads you know we got married went off to south america okay and it, it didn't work with me and it did work for him it did Where in south america when he, came, when he came home and the war oh. started he went to war the korean war we're talking about. yes and then when he came home again i was oh. still at home in our new house and he went to war again well i had had enough of the war okay and i just decided I wasn't going to go that many years again without being married. And uh, when I met my husband, he was from here. No, no, I said that she said, where in South America were you? What uh, country? Peru? What did you say, Peru? No. Not Peru. Next stage to Peru. <laughs> it's strange, I can't remember. But I lived there. I learned Spanish. I could speak it too. That's oh. impressive. Uh, I'm trying to think of the name of the city, of the country, next to Peru. Well, let me let me pull up. I, I have a little ashamed. I don't know my South America, so I can't think of the name. Argentina. Uh, not South Mexico. America. I'm just that. That's South America. Ah, <laughs> no. I think of it. I would think think of it afterwards. Ecuador, Bolivia. Ecuador, 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 Ecuador. Yeah. Oh, well, you're on the on the on the beach or on the coast. I stayed there. I learned there were two school teachers who taught me to speak Spanish. Well, that's great. So, what did your husband do? He said he was a business. What did he do in in? He Ecuador? was with a business group, and they used to fly the planes and do. Oh, some so work. he he flew he flew the planes for them. Yeah. Okay. So, wow, that's quite a change. So you've got- it, from... it was, it was, it was exciting. I guess I had travel in my phones and I wanted to travel. Seriously? And we went off. Wow, so how and long he, were you- He liked the war so that he stayed and he came home and he, to New York and then he went back to, to war. Right, so how, I'm sorry, yeah, can no. you remind me how long were you in Ecuador? Almost two years. I think if it wasn't two years, it was almost two years. Then did you I, I want there. to stay? In, did you in, want to stay or were you sad to go back? Did you want to stay in Ecuador? No. No, you're ready to go back to Virginia. Virginia, yes. Okay, so he he continues that, so you He didn't go got... back either. He, the business broke up. The, the okay. men who went there to have the business, they broke the business up and all of them came home. I think it was about, let me see, I have a picture of them. Three. Okay. About six six men who had businesses and wives, and okay. uh, I almost missed that part of my life. <laughs> yeah. Well, you've had you had it, a big it, life, so it was it, because I learned to speak Spanish. I learned it well, and I could speak and write it because I didn't have anything else to do. But I learned. Right. Wow. That's a, that's impressive. And, yeah, and uh, but it was almost two years. Okay. Maybe, maybe two years. Okay, so and, you came back. And I'm when sorry. I came back, I went to school. And that's when okay, I started so in 53, I went to Trap Hagen. I graduated in 53. I graduated and, in 53, okay, yeah, and then what I, happened? I started to work. And I now was on- you by yourself? 
for doing a solo or where well, did you work? At an office for children. When I left school, I went on to answer the ad for the job. And In I New York? There. Yeah, and I stayed on the job for 30 years. Wow, New York City. Did you live in Manhattan or? I was successful. Where did you live in New York? I designed clothes for children. Where in New York did you live? Where did I, in Brooklyn. In Brooklyn. And what was the name of the company you're with or the firm? It was on uh, next to 7th Avenue, Broadway. What was, what was the name? Glenn of Michigan. Glenn, G L E N, of Michigan. Uh -huh. Of Michigan. Okay. The people came from Michigan. And the company was in New York. And I worked as a designer for them. I wasn't recognized at first as a designer, but I did all the work. Uh, and I found prejudice there too. Uh, and I didn't believe that the people I worked with had any prejudice, but they treated me royally. Well, 40 years. They made one slip up. My, oh, boss, my boss did, okay. and uh, I couldn't couldn't get over it, you know, because we traveled together. Okay, we would come to this country, this state, to uh -huh. select fabrics. He and I would ride the plane to Alabama, get our merchandise, and go back to New York. Okay, and something happened while we were here, and he was introducing me. And I turned to a brick. He called you. Tell her what happened. Huh? Tell her what happened, what he did. I hate to put it on his name. You don't have to say his name, but you can tell him what he did. You don't have to put his <laughs> name. Because I didn't think he had a bone in his body. <laughs> he called you a gal, didn't he? Yeah. He introduced me as his negra. Oh. And he didn't spell it negro. He spelled it. N-I-G-R-E, but you don't have to print this because I don't want to, this man have to have any of my comments. We worked together the rest of the time, but there was a difference. Sure. I didn't trust. I couldn't believe because we ate together. We traveled to Boston and the places around the cities to look for ideas. Right. And he would come together here to buy see a suck of fabric and uh it's another one we used to buy you know to duck and i made the most fabulous styles for him but I'll something look, look it up i'll have to look up uh... something left me sure that's the hole i guess it was sure and i have a couple people today like that but they, they haven't yet called me a name out of my name they're so close, like sisters almost. You know? Okay. And uh, I never thought I would develop that much closeness with, with another white person, but I did. That, that's... Okay. And there's no difference. I mean, we, we're friends. No, that's, <laughs> that's, she would that's do true. anything for me and I would do anything for her. She might even call me name. I call her my name back, you see? Got it. <laughs> Uh, so I'm sorry that that happened to you. Yeah, I am uh, too. I am too. Uh, and I think about his wife and the two children. You know, we were all friends. And he didn't mean it, but I couldn't accept the fact that he couldn't mean it. Because if you didn't well, mean it, you don't do it. But I, he, I guess he thought about it afterwards too. Yeah, the, the white supremacy is, is pretty ubiquitous. But I still like him. Well, that's your. Uh, I travel with him again. Very big-hearted person. Yeah, I haven't had too many cases like that. Well, that's. No. That's good. I've been treated that's, well, most of the time, ninety-nine percent of the time. Okay. Even since I, I came here in '83, and I've been treated royally since I've been here. I have the best boss in the city. So you retired after 40 years. There's a second husband in there somewhere. Where did you meet him in, in New York? Yes. 
Jerry was from here, from Alabama. Okay, so you, did you meet him in New York or did you meet him in New York. Alabama? Yeah, New York, I was surprised if he's in Alabama. He came, he's that good a person, came from Alabama. That's how I felt about Alabama. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> uh, did you move down to Alabama because of him or? Yes, because of him. Okay, that, that would have been, that would have been a, quite a transition. Yes, he was tired of working and he wanted to go home. He was a land person, you know? Uh-huh. He lived on the land. And he, he, he liked the country. And uh, we had such a good time together. Okay. And he said, if I didn't like it here, we'd go someplace else. Okay. And I got here and he passed away in 99. Okay. And I stayed here for what I don't know. But I'm <laughs> glad I did. <laughs> for, for, <laughs> I'm glad I did. I wouldn't want to live where he was born, where he lived, you know. Okay. Yeah, but he, he was a college man. He was a sharpshooter. He was just he was just about everything. Good. Okay. Yeah, he made me laugh because I never used to laugh. That's very important. Now I sound like him when I laugh. <laughs> That's the end of my story. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm gonna just if you if you have the energy and time. Just a few questions that are not about. Yeah, you go ahead and ask your question to start another series. Okay. Um, did, did you have any uh, heroes at the time, either politically, you know, Roosevelt's Truman, Eleanor Roosevelt, or, you know. Um, yes, I liked President Roosevelt. He was a friend. Okay, good. Yeah, I liked the way he governed. And I okay. thought he was smart. And, and I guess uh, who was the next one that I liked? Well, I went from there to Truman, to uh, Eisenhower. I liked Eisenhower. Like I liked a, him as liked a Ike? I liked him as a person. I okay. don't know if he's such a good president, but he was a good person. Okay. Smart person. Uh, okay, so we went from there. What about uh, what about military? Did you have any people you looked up to in the army? I like uh, Eisenhower, and then another one was a California movie star. Okay. Ronald. Ronald Reagan. Reagan? Reagan. 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 Yes. Okay. I thought he was smart. Okay. He, he, managed, he managed well, and okay. I had a liking for for the uh, little prissy blonde one. Uh, until he act ugly, you know, from Jimmy, the South. He, he was Jimmy Carter. Huh? Jimmy Carter. I like Jimmy Carter, but I didn't think he was a good president. I mean, he was a good person, but he wasn't a good president. The other okay. blonde one, blonde one with wife who wanted to be president. Clinton. Bill Clinton. 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 I thought he did a lot for the country. He was a little bit different than the other men. Okay. He had a younger ideas and, and that kind of thing, but I didn't like him as a person. Got it. And but I liked him because he he was he had a head on his shoulders. Okay, we, we skipped Nixon. What are your thoughts on Nixon? Yeah, yeah. You he still had too much youth to be president. <laughs> he was a rambunctious. Yes, he was <laughs> very very good description of him. Uh what about uh, what about Richard Nixon? No, I didn't care for Mr. Nixon. He was a, he was a pokey, pokey kind of person. Uh, oh, okay. And I'm sorry about the trouble he got in. And I guess he did that listening to other people. Yeah. Because yeah. his, uh, his, his he had a good family. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Were there any women that you looked up to during your time? Women, women, women. Do I know any good women? Stacia? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> You're right up there with the Clintons. <laughs> Isaac, congratulations. No, no, no. We're talking about Sir Shirley Chisholm or anybody like that. Uh, uh, women, women. In history, I had. Okay. Yeah. Who, who in history? Joan of Arc? Joan of Arc. Yeah, she was brave. And she was a good leader. Okay. I just said her because of your time in Rouen. Mm -hmm. Um, any other 
women either all know, of the all of the black ladies women leaders i can't remember okay. them all now but all of them were good that like i know mary mcleod i never know how to say her last name bethune yeah. bethune yes bethune uh-huh uh, and and there's another one the music the singer uh nina simone She's a contralto. She sang Lena Horn. Hmm? Lena Horn. Mary I like Anderson as a movie star, as a movie star, like it. But not the other Mary one. Mary Anderson. Was it Mary Marian Anderson? Mary Anderson. Mary Anderson. Okay. Very accomplished word. Okay. Uh, all okay. right. I didn't um, know many of the modern modern women. I can't remember their names. The okay. younger people. Well, in the six triple eights, where did you admire any of your uh, officers there? Charity. When I was in the military? Charity. Yes, ma'am. Not particularly, it was just people leading. Okay, okay. Um, do you consider yourself an independent person? Yes, too much so. Too much so, okay. Did you yes. feel the military made you more independent or you came in independent? I'm better than I was when I was in service. I learned a lot, you know. Okay. I, was, I had to be by myself because my brothers, they would want to go somewhere and didn't want me to go. And I was insulting. I didn't know what they had, what they were doing or what whatever. I just wanted to go, you know, or to do something they were doing. OK. Uh, many people consider that women, uh, especially who served in World War II, were uh, trailblazers. Do you feel that you I were a trailblazer? So. Yes. Okay. I think you're all trailblazers, including me. Okay, excellent. Um, what are your thoughts on uh, the feminist movement, the women's liberation movement? I don't think they've worked hard enough, wise enough, and the most recent, terrible. He's all himself. He's self. No, she's she's talking about the feminist movement. The yeah. feminist movement. Yeah, the feminist movement broke broke the ice. They were the people who caused us to be freer. Okay. Whole human beings. Okay. Um, the other thing we always ask. One of the other things we always ask is about sexual harassment or uh, any sexual trauma. Did you experience any of that uh, during your time? No, I haven't, and I was ashamed of what I see has happened to the young men. Can you explain that? Uh, Did you all? And I think it must be biological, and I hope they will get something to straighten it out, because it's a ruination of human race, of the human being themselves. And this this uh, business of feminine sex with a man. You know, in a man. But she's talking about, have you been sexually harassed? No. And and what do you think about it? I say to myself too much. Okay. You don't have uh, a chance. I look okay. at if they look wrong, I they, you know, treat, treat them badly. Would you recommend uh, the mili military service to young women today? Every day. Every day, why? Good training. Good training, okay. In lots of ways, good training about themselves mostly. Has any any women followed your advice? I haven't talked to any to try to get anybody to join. Okay, you're you're waiting. I've any been neg neg negligent there. Okay. Um, what are your thoughts about women in combat? Those who are able, I would say, and unafraid. Mm -hmm. They know what they're doing. Absolutely know what they're doing. Because I think it's not uh, physically important that they be unless they have to be, unless they're forced to, you know? I think God meant a different purpose for women. The teachers, the, the guiders, the comforters, and lots of other titles you could give them, but they weren't meant to be brutal killers, you know? But if, if a woman wanted to be in the infantry, do you think, would you support yeah. that or not? I don't know if it would work because they don't have the stamina. Okay. Um, 
How has your life been different because of your time in the military? I'm wiser. Wiser. Yeah. I don't say I'm any more agile or, or capable or anything like that. But I think it's wisdom to be gained in seeing and doing. Being around different experiences or, or wisdom about yourself? I think the person themselves are learning. And they experience too, they have to have experience, you know? They'll gain experience, but they put it in the right places. Right. What was most rewarding about your military experience? Worse? What was most you're, rewarding? Huh? Rewarding, what was most rewarding? My understanding of people better. My, my socialization is just, <laughs> I don't know if that's the right word for it, but my understanding and accepting of people better. Okay. What was the, well, since you said worst, what was the worst thing about your military experience, would you say? That a lot of weak, women are weak. Women are weak, okay. They're very weak, you know. Weak and they're, uh, they're not wise, they, they do dumb things. So like ethically weak versus physically weak. Ethically weak versus physically weak. Ethics. Um, they both, both. Very physically weak and ethically too, because they haven't learned enough, you know, about life. Okay. Most people don't even think about their bodies, you know? They just go forward doing what they have to do. But if they stop and look at the body and understand the body, learn about the body, and they will see it's a fabulous instrument, fabulous something. I don't have the right word for it. But the human body is, is uh, a miracle. Okay. Uh, the so greatest I miracle. Huh? A couple more questions, um, and then the formal part's over. What does the word patriotism mean to you? <laughs> Freedom, patriotism. It grants all of that if it's truly used. Okay. Is there anything in particular you would want a civilian to know or understand about what it is like to serve in the military that they may not understand or appreciate? That's why they should go as youngsters to understand, to learn to understand, learn what understanding means. Because a lot of us had no idea how you function, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, away from the military or in the military, you don't know how you, how you really master yourself. Mm -hmm. You make it through life. And some of us are very successful in understanding the body itself and the personality. But a lot of times people are all mixed up within themselves they detest themselves. And they need that awareness that comes from outside of yourself. Okay. Uh, the six triple eight, the women of the six triple eight, I mean, you all made history. I mean, do you have a sense of, of how important your contributions were? I mean, you, you know, they, uh, essentially white people thought that black women, you know, wouldn't be able to do, um, you know, they'd be surprised. Jobs like that. Yes. Yeah, they'd be, yeah, the whole world would be surprised. The world would be surprised by black women. Right. They have so, stamina. When they train properly, they have stamina to just compete with anybody. Okay. And they have understanding, truly understanding, wisdom. Mm -hmm. And they can uh, conjure up ideas and, and reasons and directions, just like anybody else, or even better than sometimes. And they're strong. Mm -hmm. Those who are strong are really strong mm -hmm. and have a lot of determination too. Given a chance to, given a chance to equal anybody. Okay. Have you ever, have you ever heard of the, I keep going, the double V campaign, double V? V, I have a, an inkling. I don't remember okay. exactly. Well, there, there was, the double V is victory uh, abroad and at home. Um, 
you know, the fact that that African Americans were serving the United States, um, but the United States was not treating African Americans at all equally. Yes. I mean, and we are aware of that. I mean, the human race is aware of that. They, they are too. They are aware too. Everybody's aware of the mistreatment, the un, unequality. Right. But there were, you know, there were some of the African American intellectuals, you know, there's a lot of discussion of, well, why should we join this when we don't even have our, you know, why right. should we join a war to fight for other people's mm -hmm. rights when we're not even given the basic human rights it's one, in our country it's one human race different okay. colors different heights and different sizes in one human race and in order to preserve it they're going to have to work together okay that's 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 beautiful uh i don't have any other formal questions is there anything that you want to add or ask me or something you forgot to say yeah we all of us ought to learn what makes us do the things we do, you know? Why? What kind of learning that you can change? Uh, what kind of attitude can you have? Mm -hmm. Some people don't learn because they have an attitude. Mm -hmm. I don't learn as much because I'm kind of uh, slow moving, you know? I, I, you have to see and feel. And a lot of times you have to do without feeling. You just do it and feel afterwards. Uh, in order to get ahead. And sometimes you rather sacrifice that forward push because you don't have enough know-how or energy or caring, you know, and you stay dumb. Okay. Well, I really want to thank you for your time and, and your participation. Um, just we put this on the internet. We always like to have at least a photo. So I don't know if I mean, again, I, you know, we, we would be honored to have anything that you would want to donate. But if you want to just share an image that you have digitized, that would be great. Also. I, I will. I'll send it to you. I'll send you the one with you by the um, I will send you. Why one did you make one for, for today? But look at me now. I'm half a No, but it's a nice, it's one with you by the mannequin and it's real pretty. I'll send it to, I'll send that to you. You already have the one with her in the military, right? Well, there's, I've seen, I haven't, I, I, um, in the emails from Carlton, he made some attachments. I just didn't, you know, that, that were not a photo itself. It was sort of a creation using the photo. So I don't know if you had any scans I'll, of I'll just send the you one with her in the military and then a more uh, current one. Okay, that, that would be fine. That would be great. Okay. Uh, and you make it fit the words. I'm sorry? I say you make the personality of the photo to fit into the program. <laughs> right, well, what we do is we, we kind of put it on the internet. So when people are doing research, <laughs> about your your service and your contributions they but put, put a face on, on the internet when i was younger i will i'm I'll kind of fading now i'll i'll send it to you with I, her I, approval I, <laughs> I really appreciate everyone's participation your participation your help um appreciate your service um your bravery um and i just want to thank you it's been an honor <laughs> You know, I've gotten older now and I don't look the same. Yeah, I, <laughs> you, you look good for 101, that I'll say. Go well, on 102. Because the, the medicine that made my eyes come out. Yeah, but they, but that's going to be, they already know how. You look wonderful for 101. No, <laughs> I wasn't 101 then when the doctor gave me the oh, no, no, penicillin. No, no. And but my the, eyes the, came outside. We don't need to tell them that. That's going to go on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we won't have to put that part on. You'll we won't have to, to look, put it on there. You, no. You'll get to look over and tell us if there's anything you don't want. Take out all the ugly stuff. Put the pretty stuff in. <laughs> well, this is, we could. This is history. We want to know. We do want to know everything you're comfortable sharing. I mean, it's, this yeah. is not a raw, raw thing. We just, you no. know, we want Take out what is not proper. She, well, it's, yeah. it's, it's all true. proper. It's, it's, it's all true. Proper. But it's not, it's not necessary. 
You did a good job. Everything you said today was fabulous. Good? Yes. Is that right? <laughs> yes. But she thank you, so. Beth, and I will um, get her approval and send you those pictures as soon as I show I them. I used to have her. nice hair. Look at me now. <laughs> I've been oh. around. You see the bald spot. Oh. Well, thank you again. And I, again, I appreciate it. Welcome. Your time. It's been nice being with you. It was nice meeting you. I wish it could have been, you know, in person. But uh, we, we, you do what you have to do. You're almost there. Almost <laughs> there. Okay. Have you All gotten right. your vaccine? Yes, she got the first one. She gets the second one in about uh, two more weeks. All right. Vaccine. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's okay, two weeks. Great. Yes, it's two weeks. weeks. Yes. Yeah. We, we need to keep you around as long as possible. That's yes, right. keep me here. Yeah. <laughs> I have work to do. That's what they tell me on the page. Is I have things to do. Yeah. I do have to. That's the truth, too. Right. And there's some countries you haven't been to yet. So, <laughs> yes. All right. Well, well thank, thank you. you. Have a good weekend. You too. Bye-bye. All right. Bye. It's been nice being with you. Nice, nice being with you too. <laughs>